Um, yeah, so my name is Michael and I'm here to talk to you about a system that we recently piloted um, at Wine Australia called Vinsights uh, and essentially how we used um, satellite scanning algorithms to identify vineyards across our pilot areas which were all of Western Australia and the Riverland of South Australia. So that up there is a quote by a man called William Edwards Denning, he's a quality guru. Um, the quote itself, without data, you're just another person with opinion. It was a bit of a guiding principle that we used throughout the project. Uh, the reason being, it's, um, well, one, it's just we consider it really true, and it was underlying a lot what we were talking about. Um, and secondly, uh, there's, there's a couple of opinions that float around in the Australian wine industry. Um, so, you know, that was, we just found that quite fitting. Uh, the other thing I'll add to it as well is um, information data is useful, but it needs to be quality data. It needs to be consistent and repeatable, um, which is really was the, the core of the innovation that we were aiming for when we were making this system of insights. So before we get to there, uh, Wine Australia, uh, as part of our role, we've been collecting data for many, many years. So uh, always working to improve. So we've been in the past consolidating a lot of surveys. Surveying is really the the way that a lot of information gets collected out you know, in all the agricultural themes. Uh, survey fatigue is very real. I'm sure 100 people have probably spoken about it either up on this spot here during the conference or amongst each other. Uh, so we've been working really hard to yeah, just consolidate some of those surveys in areas related to wine grape crush volume, overall production, inventories, domestic sales information. Um, fortunately, our role as the uh, regulator of wine exports in Australia also gives us a rich data set of export wine um, and everything related to it. So we aggregate that, we analyse it and we make it available to the sector for the benefit of the sector. Um, unfortunately, uh, probably one of the worst um, areas that we struggle with is um, we don't have good access or good quality to the foundational information related to Australian wine. So the real core stuff, how much is grown, where is it, and what type of wine grapes are in the ground. Uh, pretty much the stuff that you really you need to know if you're making any business decision right from the farm gate through the supply chain um, and you know, making strategies at a corporate level even. It's um, fundamental. In the past, we've paid the ABS to collect this information for us. Uh, the issue we've found with that approach is that the ABS um, can only provide us information at a level which is aggregated and um, not at the level of detail that is truly useful. Uh, the reason being is that the ABS obviously has to operate within um, certain regulations um, relating to privacy and secondly there's over a hundred varieties of wine grapes grown in Australia which is far too many to stick on a survey that somebody has to fill out. Uh, so uh, what that really means is that our, our access to knowledge on the grape production down to the really informative information, so the, the varieties, the yields, the volume, the water usage, and even core information such as rootstock and clone um, that these are grown on uh, is patchy and siloed at best. Uh, this limits our ability within Wine Australia to fully understand and make decisions based on quality data um, and leads back to that opinion problem that I mentioned earlier and that exists throughout the entire supply chain, value chain and anyone who even supports the industry or is considering investing in supporting the industry. Um, so the question was could we find another way to collect this vineyard foundational information? So uh, the answer, to answer that question we had an extra limiting um, factor that we had to work within which is as Wine Australia we don't actually know where the vineyards in Australia are. Um, it's, yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, there's, there's hope uh, that this issue is going to be resolved by some recently passed legislation uh, around levy payer registers, uh, which will enable RDCs like Wine Australia to get access to a full register of levy payers right down to the producer level, not the processor level, uh, which would be very helpful and make a huge difference. Um, but until that point, we were faced with the question before we could even start this project is, how do we work out where the vineyards are to even start creating this foundation data set? So that's, that's what we're really focused on. So before I talk about how we achieve that, I'll just play a little short propaganda video. Um, <laughs>
So being faced with the question of how could we reliably identify the population of vineyards in Australia in a timely and repeatable manner, we, we basically asked ourselves, like, is there an alternative to the manual scanning or collection of information ad hoc that you know, usually will work, but as soon as it's done, it's out of date, and if somebody wants to interrogate the information, you know, it's, it's difficult to respond in a, in a good way. Um, so while computer-driven identification of objects using satellite technology is a pretty common technology these days, um, it's not very common in agriculture. It's common in some areas, but it's, it's not applied that often. Um, and then in uh, viticulture especially, it's even less. Uh, Broadacre, they, those guys have some stuff that's been worked out, but for viticulture, not so much. Uh, so there is some research papers that are out there that described um, finding vineyards using satellite technology. Uh, they showed 85% roughly as an accuracy rating, which was good, um, and something that we could work with, but they weren't at a level that could scale to you know, an area such as Western Australia to say, go find the vineyards. Uh, so we did a lot of searching. Eventually we found a small company out of the United States who had developed a vineyard scanning algorithm that they were suggesting could come up with an accuracy rate of 98, 90 plus percent. Um, so we partnered with them to make this pilot um, program and um, see if what they were claiming applied to Australia and would work here under our conditions in our landscapes. So what the vine detection uh, technology does, it, it uses essentially uh, machine learning um, and a rule-based scoring system to process the satellite imagery that comes in um, to find what it thinks is a vineyard. The way it does that, it looks at size, uh, it looks at behaviour over the course of a year if the satellite imagery is available, uh, trellising, uh, shape, and um, also proximity of other what, things that it considers a vineyard, knowing that you know, uh, regions and appellations exist. Uh, what it then does is it scans all the entire images and finds what it considers to be a single row. It saves that row um, and then collects the concurrent rows until it finds a gap, which it would then square out as a vineyard block, essentially, creating our uh, planting. Uh, so, yeah, that's, again, a bit of an example. You can see even a, um, a curved row out there, which the algorithm has almost picked up. Um, some tweaking in the algorithm would have fixed that up completely. It would have found it as one. Uh, so it, it works under most conditions, um, hills, all that sort of stuff. Um, pretty exciting. Um, I'll add as well, the satellite imagery that we used was 100% uh, free, um, source from the best available that was for us. Um, I guess the great thing about vineyards is they don't move very often, so even if you've got a satellite image that's 12 months old, it's, um, yeah, it's still fine for us. Um, the algorithms at this point aren't completely automated. The process takes about four to six weeks. Uh, during that four to six week process, uh, an expert who understands how it works uh, reviews the outputs, they tweak the parameters. Essentially, they tell the, the machine learning AI whether it was right or wrong so it can produce a better output. Over time, that won't need to happen as often, but especially in this first stage, it was important. So that up there is the output of the algorithm being run over the Riverland in South Australia. So the Riverland grows 26% of all the grapes that are produced in the country, so it's not a trivial area at all. Um, and that was the first place we actually trialled this on a large scale. So the results of uh, that scan there were uh, analysed by Vine Health Australia. So for those who don't know, Vine Health Australia is a biosecurity focused organisation uh, who all wine grape growers uh, and table grape growers in South Australia need to report their plantings to. So their database is considered the, um, the official authority of all plantings um, across South Australia. So what did they tell us? Uh, they came back and said that we had an absolute accuracy rating of 98% compared to um, their database. Uh, interestingly as well, within that 2% margin of error were some plantings that hadn't actually been reflected in their official data set just yet because there was some newer satellite technology that had popped up. So yeah, very, very promising. 
Uh, we also perform scans across all of WA, like I said. So in WA, we estimated that we got approximately 92% accuracy. WA doesn't have an official register of vineyards, so the way we came up with that 92% number was using a combination of analysis of the previous surveys um, and old um, sort of smoke tank registers that existed that have been completed in the past, and also the uh, Department of Agriculture and Food over there did a ground truthing exercise for us. Um, the reason that we came in at 92% in WA instead of 98% like we did in the Riverland was largely due to table grapes um, growing out in the Swan Valley, which um, the algorithm mistakenly picked up as vineyards. So they have these sort of um, V-shaped or Y-shaped um, trellising, and it, it threw the algorithm off a little bit and wasn't always sure whether it was a vineyard or not. So that was really cool, um, and we were really excited by the output of that. But you know, we also learned that you know, while the technology exists uh, to find these vineyards, and that's uh, very promising, it's not a silver bullet for us. Um, you know, there's um, there's still the question about variety that needs to be answered, uh, and you know, a bit of work to be done. So I guess the the key gaps that we found that we're working on at the moment is um, the algorithm couldn't find newly planted vineyards. So they show up pretty faint on the satellite imagery, so the impact of tweaking it so it would flag those vineyards as vineyards basically leads to a worse result overall because all of a sudden you're picking up all sorts of random things um, and mistakenly flagging them, which is not useful. Um, we also can't distinguish using this method uh, between an active and an abandoned vineyard, so there are a lot of abandoned vineyards out there. Um, that's an issue for biosecurity related concerns and also wine grape supply forecasting. Uh, it's, you know, if it's not actually being used, it's, it needs to be considered differently in statistics. Um, and most significantly, like I mentioned, uh, the variety information can't be determined by satellite. We need to still physically ask someone or find that information from a third party system of some sort and work out how to get it in. So, Having completed the pilot study, um, it, which was aimed at sort of proving if we could actually collect this foundational information in a, in a different way, um, now we have to work out what to do next. So that Vinsight system was recently, um, the pilot was ended, um, and now we're sort of looking at three main areas. Uh, so the first one for us is the uh, levy payer register. So that's really critical, I think, for the success of this project. So. Shame Senator Russin's gone. But, um, so what we're looking for the register to assist us with is um, by giving us access and knowing who owns these vineyards, it solves a lot of issues that we come around related to privacy and information and um, just even having the ability to sort of collect data in any authoritative way. Um, again, it's not our intention to spam or create another survey um, and it's difficult to do that. Um, when you're trying to essentially run a sales process because you don't know who the people are. Um, second, uh, we continue doing what we're doing. So uh, we took a lot of learnings from this pilot and uh, we're just, yeah, we're going to continue collecting, analysing, presenting information, focusing on low impact collection methods. So sort of that is both through corporate and existing systems that are floating out there. Things like spray diaries is a good example as an opportunity that we sort of want to look into in the next phase of this project to see how we can work there to integrate. And um, third, uh, we're looking to invest in a local capability to essentially replicate what we found um, during this trial with the US company. So there's a growing number of groups in Australia who are experimenting with spatial imagery analysis. Um, and developing this automatic detection of crops. So it's our intention to um, sort of partner with the local community to develop a sustainable um, technology that we can use here um, and have control of and really tailor it for Australia and the conditions we've got, because they are different. Uh, yeah, so to summarise quickly there, uh, during the pilot we were able to do something that's actually never been done before um, in the Australian wine sector, so we proved a capability to identify every vineyard in the country with a really high accuracy, um, all using free satellite imagery without actually being granted access to any official business registers. We did it from scratch. Um, so that's, yeah, something I'm personally pretty excited to have been part of and I'm looking forward to see what we do next. Um, yeah, so to finish off, what I'll do is I'll leave you with a couple of um, short videos that we put together just showing 
extra um, capabilities that can be created now that we've established this base question as where are the vineyards and what they look like. So traceability was mentioned earlier. I mean, that's, that's a really obvious one. It's, it's difficult to prove that the grapes in the bottle came from somewhere if you don't even know where the vineyards are um, from an authority point of view. Um, so what this one is here is just a bit of a video showing a 3D representation of plantings at, by a local government area. So that's real data that we collected during the um, project. Uh, again, just showing how it can be used life and dust and just make it available to people um, instead of in a spreadsheet or something like that. Um, the second one's actually pretty exciting, I think. It's, uh, it demonstrates a, a tourism potential uh, of collecting this information. So what the concept here is a flyover of Margaret River over in WA, a beautiful place for those who haven't been, I'd recommend it. Um, if you're basically here, if you're a vineyard owner and you wanted your information to be visible to potential tourists, both in Australia or even just considering um, coming to the area, you can opt in to show your information or a subset of the information that's collected and it can flow through to the official association's website or to other tourism focused websites essentially utilising the data that already exists and needs to be collected for other purposes to avoid them having to do a separate project to collect this information, make a tourist map. It happens out there all the time. It's, yeah, it frustrates people and it's automatically updated. Um, so yeah, I might actually just leave it at that one. So um, thank you very much. And I'll just ask anybody who does have any satellite capability or knows of people who are doing that sort of stuff, um, yeah, my details are in the um, delegate register or get in contact with us at Wine Australia.